Like so many other colleges, Sam Houston State University in Huntsville is buzzing with activity. Out on the quad, students stroll from one class to the next under the watchful eye of General Sam Houston. While inside these hallowed halls, a wealth of knowledge is being shared. I'm going to make a contention that contracts really drive a lot of what we do in higher education. And, they're and here in room 115, Dr. Matthew Fuller is discussing contracts with his higher education law class. Every day I get to wake up and, and go help young people and, and teach them about things in higher education leadership that I, I think they need. So it's the best job. I get paid for my thoughts. We've all heard it before. When you love what you do and you do what you love, you never have to work another day in your life. And it's safe to say that teaching is Matt's passion. But it's at his home in Montgomery where he wears a very different kind of suit. And that teacher becomes the student. I've learned so much from bees. Every time I open up one of the hives, it's just, it's a new experience. If you're a school teacher or if you are a mom or dad, you can teach anybody anything through honeybees. The humble honeybee, zipping here and there, scouting for nectar, all the while aiding flowers in their pollination. They've become Matt's biggest passion. You see, together with his sons, he maintains and takes care of 140,000 little girls. I have 140,000 daughters over here, basically. <laughs> so Most of them are females, and, and there are a few males. You know, we hear a lot about their decline across the globe, and uh, folks, you know, don't realize that they really are a superorganism. They are an apex organism that we rely on. We need them way more than they need us. <laughs> Three of every five bites of food that are on your plate tonight come from a honeybee. And they just fly their wings off quite literally to, to put nectar in that hive and ultimately put food and honey on our plates. Well, of course, we had to suit up and get an up close and personal look at these workaholic creatures. Over the years, we've met our fair share of beekeepers, but Matt's a little different. Here's how it's gonna go down. That's because his hives come from the most unlikely of places. If you guys don't mind, I say a real quick prayer. I'm gonna then cut them open. Once I drop that down, that's gonna be like World War III. There was one that I got from Bush Intercontinental Airport that was a removal there. That was a pretty fun to, you know, be seeing right next door to the planes flying off. So what happens? People find bees or hear bees in the swarming and they think, I've got to do something? Right. And they call you? They call me or they grab a can of, of wasp spray. One of those two options works better for them than the other, so. <laughs> Professional bee removal, an arduous process that involves cutting, prying and ripping to gain access to an unwanted hive. Matt has extracted them from inside walls, underneath buildings, and everywhere else you can think of, all with one very important goal, to save and relocate the hive. Those people that pick up the can of wasp spray, what do you tell them? I tell them don't do that. It would be real easy for a lot of the homeowners that I see just to grab that spray can of wasp spray and, and kill them. That bee serves a purpose. That bee has a, a life and a responsibility that she is dutifully carrying out. Folks have said that if every bee were to leave the planet Earth today, we'd have four months to live. And so they are very much of an important part of the ecosystem. Since the beginning of time, it's been the pleasure of the bee to gather nectar from the flower. It has also been the pleasure of the flower to yield its pollen to the bee. There is a connectiveness in the way Mother Nature works. It exists in her beauty, 
and the unspoken way all life works together. And with every hive Matt successfully removes from an unwanted area, he takes comfort in knowing he's doing his part to keep the circle of life going round and round. Bees have just taught me to slow down and enjoy the little things, enjoy the interconnectedness, enjoy the fact that you know they're, they're producing for us what we uh, need. And that's not just food, but that's beauty, that's flowers. A field of wildflowers is, is the hand work of God and uh, of bees. And bees are how he decided to, to paint that field. They're such an interesting creature.